Welcome back again in Latilides tutorial. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to create this editable retro 3D text effect in Adobe Illustrator by utilizing the appearance panel in Illustrator, and I will also explain how the appearance panel works. And for this tutorial, first I'll show you how to create a retro style using the appearance panel, and lastly I'll show you how to add a grain effect to this editable text to give it a more retro feel. Before we move on to the tutorial you can check this website after watching this tutorial. Here you can get many courses about Adobe Illustrator and many other courses. Without any further ado let's jump into Adobe Illustrator. As usual, prepare a document with a size of 1980 by 1080 pixels, with RGB color mode, remember, it must be in RGB color mode. Here, I have prepared some colors that I will use in this tutorial, you can get these colors in the description. Also I have prepared a download link for the i file of this tutorial. The first step in this tutorial is to add all these colors into the swatches panel, so we can easily use these colors, when we create this retro 3D text effect. Open the swatches panel in the window menu. You can find it at the bottom right here. Once the swatches panel is open, then select all these colors. Then in the swatches panel, click the new color group button. In this new color group panel you can give it a name. Here I give it the name Retro Color. Click OK when finished. As you can see here, these five colors are already in the swatches in one group, so we'll be easier to spot them when we need them. Now, we will create the background first. Create a rectangle following the size of the artboard using the rectangle tool. After that, use the eyedropper tool to give it a color. Choose the fourth color from the color palette that I have prepared. Or you can choose it from the swatches panel. Once the background is complete, the first thing we will create is the text. Just as usual, create the text using the type tool on the toolbar. Click anywhere in the artboard area and type any word you want. The text that we create will look small, compared to the size of the full HD artboard, so we have to adjust the size. Here I give him 350 points. Next, change the font type with a font that is close to a retro style. I don't have much font collection, and a font that is close to a retro style that I have, is only Bondschrift. There are no restrictions here regarding the type of font, you can use other fonts. Next, open the character panel on this part, and change the tracking to 100 or more. The tracking function is to provide distance between characters. Set the position of this text back to the middle of the artboard. And the next step is, I'm gonna give it a retro effect, for that open the appearance panel. You can go to window. And click on this appearance to open it. First, make sure the text that we want to give the effect is selected, then go to the appearance panel. In this panel we can give any effect to a text or object by adding a stroke or fill first, then giving one or more effects to the stroke or fill, or we can also give it an effect outside of the fill or stroke. To understand what I'm saying, let's just put it into practice. But before we get too far with this appearance panel, I'd like to remove the default black color from this text, by double clicking on this character layer. As you can see inside this character layer, there are already stroke and fill layers, but they are already there by default, so we just need to make sure they are both in none color. Because the stroke is already in none color, so we only change this fill layer. Click the drop down menu next to this black box to open the swatches panel, then select none. Actually, why don't we just give this stroke and fill an effect? The answer is we can't. As you can see here we can't add any more strokes or fills, nor can we add any effects to these characters. All the effects that are in the characters panel are not active, which means we absolutely can't. So in this character layer we are only allowed to change the color, increase the stroke weight, and adjust the opacity. So, to add an effect to this text, we have to exit this character layer, by clicking on the top layer of this panel. And so this is where we can add more than one stroke and layer, and we can also give it an effect or more. So that's a quick look at how this appearance panel works with text, and you'll find things are different if you use shapes or objects other than text. Now, let's start working on this retro text effect. But before that, you can check this cool website, you can find various classes here, ranging from classes on illustration, marketing and business, photography and video, 3D and animation, architecture, to fashion and music and audio. In addition, you can find classes that are specifically about Adobe Illustrator or other software in this section. The link for this website is under the like button. Back in Illustrator, as you can see in this panel, 
Here we find nothing but the character layer I talked about earlier, plus the opacity layer. So the first thing we're going to do is give it a new layer. And the first layer that we will create is a fill layer to give it color or define the shape of this text. Just click this add new fill button to add a new fill layer. Once we add a fill layer for the first time in this appearance panel, then automatically a stroke layer will also appear. So if we add a stroke layer for the first time, then the fill layer will automatically be there too. It's like two inseparable lovebirds. We also can't delete one of them. If we select this stroke layer and then delete it, then the fill layer will also be deleted. Because one of them cannot be deleted, then in a condition where we only need one of them, then we can only hide the other. As you can see here, initially we just added a fill layer, then the stroke layer automatically appears but it's only disabled, or hidden, or in none color, and vice versa. If we only need the stroke layer, then we can give it any color to activate it, then for the fill layer we can hide it or disable the color. Okay, back to the previous step where we first added a fill layer. For this fill layer, we're going to change the color to color number 2 in the palette I've created. We can replace it by clicking the drop down menu, next to this black box. After that, select this second color in the color group that we created earlier. For now, just leave this stroke layer there without touching it, we'll use it later, but just leave it there for now. Next, I'm going to add a new fill layer below this existing fill layer. To add a layer and position it as the bottom layer, we must first select this character's layer. If another layer besides this character layer is being selected, the new layer will be above the currently selected layer. For example, if this fill layer is selected, and we add a new layer, then the new layer will be above this fill layer. Likewise, if the stroke layer is selected, when we add a new layer, the new layer will be above the stroke layer. So to place a new layer under the existing fill layer, we must select the layer below this fill layer, namely the character's layer. Select this character's layer, then click add new fill. After that, change the color by opening the swatches panel over here, and selecting the first color in the color group that we created. This doesn't seem to make any difference, and we still don't see this darker orange color. That's because the dark orange text is right below the lighter orange layer. We can see it by clicking the visibility toggle in the form of this eye icon. If you're asking, what exactly do I mean by creating a new layer, with a different color below the previous fill layer? The answer is, I created this new fill layer to create a 3D effect. So let's just create a 3D effect. But keep in mind the effect that I will use is not really a 3D effect. It's just that the resulting visual can interpret a three-dimensional object. Let's just add the effect that I mean. Click add new effect. Distort and transform. And transform. To get a 3D effect using this transform effect, is to give it 60 copies, which means we will duplicate this fill layer 60 times. Then replace the horizontal move with 0.4 pixels, and the vertical move with 0.3 pixels. Which means, the distance of each of these layers after being duplicated, is 0.4 pixels horizontally, and 0.3 pixels vertically. It also means, that the distance between the duplicated layers, is 0.4 pixels horizontally, and 0.3 pixels vertically. So to see the results, just click OK. It already looks like a 3D object, but it really isn't. The part that has this depth is actually a text layer which is duplicated as much as 60 with the same distance using the transform tool. If you zoom in on the diagonal, you will see many duplicated layers at the same distance. Next, I'm going to give it another effect, so that the depth that creates this three-dimensional effect doesn't look flat, so I'm going to give it a shadow effect, but not on this second fill layer, but on the first fill layer so that the shadow effect will overwrite the fill layer that has been given a transform effect so that the result will be more imaging of three-dimensional object. Just click add new effect. Stylize. Drop shadow. In the drop shadow panel, change the blending mode to overlay. Then change the opacity to 50%. X and Y offset by 5 pixels. Blur replace with 10 pixels. And click OK. Now we can see the result is closer to the three-dimensional impression compared to before. We give the transform effect to the second fill layer, and a drop shadow effect to the first fill layer. If you see what I did earlier, then you will realize that we give effect to every fill layer that we have created, so that each of these fill layers has a different, and separate effect. However, it is possible that we can give effect to our text outside of all these fill, and stroke layers, it is possible, that we can give an effect one or more effect to this object, or text outside of these layers. I will give an example so you can understand it quickly. 
Let's say I will give a transform effect to this object only, not to these layers, not on these layers. Without selecting any layer in this panel, but make sure this text is still selected. And there are no selected layers in this panel. Then just click add new effect. For example, I gave it a transform effect. In this transform panel, I immediately gave 30 on the horizontal and vertical move, so that we will get a significant distance, while for copies I fill it with 2 or 3, it doesn't matter, and click OK. As you can see the result here, we find that all the effects on the layer are also duplicated. For more details, we can look at the appearance panel here. Previously we have added two fill layers, and each has been given a drop shadow and transform effect. If you take a closer look, that if we apply one, or more effects to a layer, then the effect will only affect that layer, and it doesn't affect the other fill layers at all. You can see here, as this drop shadow effect is inside the first fill layer, and the drop shadow effect only affects this layer and doesn't affect the layers below it. Likewise, with this one fill layer that has been given a transform effect. So you could say that in a fill or stroke layer we can give one or more effects, and only affect on that layer only. So the conclusion is that we can give each layer a different effect without affecting each other. Meanwhile, if we want to give an effect as a whole, or in other words we want to give effect to all layers at the same time, then we only need to place the effect outside the existing layer, like the transform effect that I made last time. Effect that are outside the layer will affect all layers and the effects that are inside the layer. So according to the example here, this transform effect will duplicate all layers, and the effects that are inside those layers. So, that's how effect work on this appearance layer, we can give effects to each layer and at the same time we can also give effects to all layers. Now I'm going to remove this transform effect. And we're done with these two fill layers. Next I'm going to add some more layers, and the next layer is the stroke layer. But we don't need to create a new one anymore, because we already have one, the stroke layer which is automatically there, when we add the fill layer at the first time. So we are going to make use of this stroke layer. But, I need this stroke layer below the second fill layer, and to move it, simply click and drag this stroke layer below the fill layer. When finished, just replace the color with black or dark gray. You won't see this black stroke for a while, because it's covered by these two fill layers, because the position of this stroke is indeed below these two fill layers. So for this stroke layer, we're going to give it a different effect to make it visible even under these two fill layers but previously I'll increase the stroke weight to 3 points. And the effect that I will give to this stroke layer is an offset path. Click this, add new effect, path. Then offset path. With this effect, we maximize the size of the text or character by expand it, for the offset value, give 13 points. So that this text stroke is expanded by 13 points, and click OK. Next, I will give a fill to the inside of this stroke, and place it under this stroke layer. For that, first select this character layer and then click add new fill. And give it a third color from the color group we created at the beginning of the tutorial. Just like the previous stroke, we haven't seen this layer yet because it's positioned below the two fill layers above. So we're also going to give it an offset path effect with the same value. Click add new effect, path. Offset path. For offset, give also 13 pixels. And click OK. Next. I will create two more fill layers below this one, with the same offset path effect. Instead of me creating a new fill layer and giving it an effect, I'd rather just duplicate the previous layer to save time, because the next fill layer will also has the same offset path effect, so we just need to duplicate this fill layer. Just click the duplicate selected item button to duplicate this layer. After that, select a new fill layer and change its color to the sixth color from the color group of the swatches. Now we still can't see it. Because its position is below the previous fill layer, so for this fill layer I will give it a transform effect to form a three-dimensional impression just like the second fill layer above. Just click add new effect. Distort and transform. Transform. And in the transform panel, for the horizontal move I fill it with 0.4 pixels. While for the vertical move I filled it with 0.3 pixels. And finally for copies, I give 90 which means this fill layer will be duplicated 90 times with a distance of 0.4 pixels, for each duplication horizontally, and 0.3 pixels vertically. Click OK. Do you see it? This last fill layer forms a three-dimensional impression and becomes the basis or base for the 3D dimensional text that is above it. 
And the last part, that we are going to add into our retro text effect, is the shadow. And to create the shadow for this retro text, we need another new fill layer and make it as a shadow. And to save time again I'm just duplicating this last fill layer. We no longer need to give it an offset path effect, because this layer already has it. Make sure the layer you want to duplicate is selected, then just click the duplicate selected item button. After duplicated, select the duplicated result, and replace the color first with the fifth color from the color group that we created at the beginning of the video. Now, we can't see the new layer because it's still being overwritten by the previous layer, because we already have a transform effect on this new layer, so we don't need to give it a transform effect, we just need to edit it. Click this transform effect to open the transform panel. For the horizontal move, change it to minus 17 pixels. While for the vertical move, change it to 50 pixels. You will see the result like this, because the value of the copies here still contains 90, so this layer is still duplicated by 90 pieces with a distance of minus 17 pixels horizontally and 50 pixels vertically. So we just need to delete this 90 value and return it to zero, and that's it. Now we just have to click OK to finish. And for this shadow layer, we just need to modify it a bit by lowering its opacity. And what you have to pay attention to in this section, is the opacity in this shadow fill layer, not the lowest opacity in this panel, because this opacity, is the opacity setting for the whole layer, which means if you lower the opacity on this part then all layers will be affected. But what we want to lower the opacity, is only this layer, so this opacity we will use, just click there, and lower the opacity to 30. And finally, change the blending mode to multiply. Click anywhere to close this transparency panel. And now we have finished working on this retro 3D text effect by making use of this appearance panel. And the last step, is we will add a grain effect or an effect that is most often used to create a retro impression. To create the grain effect, first create a rectangle that has the same size as the artboard. Here I only use the rectangle tool. Next, give this rectangle a black color, you just need to open the swatches panel and choose black. After this rectangle is black, now go to the effect menu. Texture, and grain, 40 for intensity, and 100 for contrast. And choose sprinkles for the grain type. Just click OK when done. Now open the transparency panel in the window menu. In the transparency panel, change the blending mode to soft light. And lower the opacity to 40%. Now you can check this cool website, you can find various classes here, ranging from classes on illustration, marketing and business photography and video, 3D and animation, architecture, to fashion and music and audio. In addition, you can find classes that are specifically about Adobe Illustrator or other software in this section. The link is under the like button. I have also prepared a link to get the colors I use in this tutorial as well as a download link for this Illustrator tutorial file project. Okay that's all for this Illustrator tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe, press the like button, and if you have any questions don't hesitate to ask me in the comments. See you in the next video.